president leaves us no choice but to act because he is trying to corrupt once again the election for his own benefit. Donald Trump is heading for impeachment in the House of Representatives by Christmas and trial in the Senate in the new year. It's a hoax. It's a hoax. It's a big fat hoax. Good evening. Our democracy is what is at stake, said Nancy Pelosi, as she confirmed impeachment charges will be brought against Donald Trump, accusing him of abusing his power for political benefits by making military aid to Ukraine dependent on them holding an investigation into the son of a Democrat rival for the presidency, Joe Biden. Trump is now willing it all on, suggesting he will bring many witnesses to the Senate where Republicans would have to turn on him to join the Democrats in bringing him down. Also tonight, the Brexit party loses four defectors to the Conservatives as another cabinet minister refuses to rule out a no-deal Brexit next year. French workers strike in cities across the country and clash with police on the streets of Paris. And why is social care the crisis politicians dare not tackle when so many people tell pollsters they are prepared to pay more tax to pay for it? And I'm in Cardiff Bay. Our Welsh voters could prove crucial in determining whether Boris Johnson will obtain a workable majority in next week's election. And the Tories are targeting a number of constituencies held by Labour even in this very city. Behind me, the Welsh Senate, the seat of the Welsh Assembly still held by Labour. In 2016, Wales voted to leave the EU. In the past days, I've travelled across this nation to assess what they're wishing for from next Thursday's general election. Because it feels like everything is up for grabs. Everything is changing. Everything is in flux. So suddenly, Welsh independence is not n even nearly the wackiest thing. Traditionally, the impeachment of a president would always be seen as a humiliation for the United States. But Democrats are now presenting it as a chance for America to redeem itself. The top Democrat, the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, has announced they will bring articles of impeachment against President Trump. If he is impeached by the House with its Democrat majority, the Senate, which is held by the Republicans, would hold a trial and need to agree by a two-thirds majority. The heart of the Constitution is at stake, says Nancy Pelosi. President Trump says she's just had a nervous fit. Our Washington correspondent, Siobhan Kennedy, reports. Are you worried about the stain that impeachment might have on your legacy, the President is asked? No, not at all. Not at all. It's a hoax. It's a hoax. It's a big fat hoax. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth? This is exactly what the Russian government was hoping for. The whole truth. They heard a conversation of a conversation. And nothing but the truth. Was there a quid pro quo? So help you God. I want nothing. I want nothing. After a breakneck schedule of investigations, public hearings, political brawls and angry nothing. denials. We are better than that. By this morning, the House Democrats leader had heard enough. Our democracy is what is at stake. The president leaves us no choice. Today, I am asking our chairman to proceed with articles of impeachment. What a welcome home for Donald Trump. He returned from the NATO summit in London last night, a long flight with plenty of time to stew over how other leaders were caught mocking him. His election rival, Joe Biden, used that time to create this ad. Several world leaders mocking President Trump. They're laughing at him. The world sees Trump for what he is. Insincere, ill-informed, corrupt. Dangerously incompetent and incapable, in my view, of world leadership. The ugliness of this election campaign will be unprecedented. Add an impeachment trial in the Senate to the mix. An already angry and unpredictable president, and 2020 is set to be a year of historic division like no other. Do you hate the president, Madam Speaker? I don't, I don't Trump, hate anybody. I don't have a phrase in the Catholic House. We don't hate anybody. Not Speaker any. Pelosi couldn't let that one go. Me. I don't hate anyone and always prayed for the president. And I still pray for the president. I pray for the president all the time. So don't mess with me when it comes to words like that. That provoked a presidential tweet. Nancy Pelosi just had a nervous fit. She said she prays for the president. I don't believe her, not even close. 
And the Republican House Minority Leader says it's Nancy Pelosi, not President Trump, who's weakened the nation. They've always wanted to impeach the president. You watch them at their words, watch them at their actions, watch them what they have done. History will look back today and it'll be a sad day. But the main stage for the impeachment fight isn't in the House. President Trump knows with a Democratic majority, they will impeach him. His attitude, he said today, do it now. Only the Senate has the power to convict and remove him, though, and the Republicans control that. And today, perhaps like never before, the president's counting on those Republicans to keep him in power. I don't think anyone thought that the Democrats wouldn't press ahead with charges against the president. What's significant here today is the timing. The latest Republican defense has been that this is all happening too soon. The clock and the calendar and the looming election, they argue, are driving the process, not the facts. And there is a risk that the Democrats are seen to be rushing ahead with this too soon not to be giving the public who they need on side, not giving them enough time to digest all these complex allegations. Well, Nancy Pelosi, as you saw just then, was definitive today. She's pressing ahead now, she says, not because of the politics, but for the sake of the people and the sake of the Constitution. She'd better just hope that the people, though, believe her, because if they don't, this could all come back to bite the Democrats. And ironically, to boost President Trump if he's seen a victim as a victim just as we head into the election in 2020. Thanks, Siobhan. Well, joining me now from Minneapolis is Richard Painter, who served as the chief White House ethics lawyer in the George W. Bush administration, a longtime Republican. He left the party in 2017 over its handling of the Russia crisis and recently stood as a Democrat candidate. Richard Painter, what do you make of the timing of this? Is there a danger of the Democrats moving in in decent haste? Well, this shouldn't be a partisan matter. As you noted, I was a Republican uh, for 30 years until Donald Trump took over the party. Uh, and uh, many Americans uh, are very, very concerned about Donald Trump's behavior in office. And the evidence is overwhelming uh, that Donald Trump and his cohort sought to extort Ukraine. They solicited a bribe from Ukraine in return for U.S. military aid to Ukraine. They wanted Ukraine to investigate Joe Biden, his son Hunter Biden, and then also uh, investigate a, a conspiracy theory, a false conspiracy theory, that somehow Ukraine uh, was the one that meddled in the 2016 election instead of Russia. Uh, this is criminal conduct, and this is on top of the president's obstruction of justice in the Russia investigation, as outlined in part two of the Mueller report, and his acceptance of foreign payments uh, from foreign governments, emoluments in violation of the United States Constitution, his attacks on the free press, his attacks on ethnic minorities, the list goes on and on. But will the Senate... Uh, the president's clearly guilty. But will the Senate you know, take that through by a two-thirds majority. Can you really see Republicans turning on the president and joining Democrats? Well, we'll see what happens. Uh, it will take 20 Republican senators to convict President Trump. Uh, and uh, in the Nixon impeachment, 1974, uh, when articles were being voted on, articles of impeachment in the United States House of Representatives Judiciary Committee, nobody thought uh, that the Republicans in the Senate would turn on President Nixon, but indeed they did. And they walked over to the White House and they said, you're gone, uh, this is it. Uh, the evidence was overwhelming. Well, here the evidence is even more overwhelming. So the Republicans are going to be secretly discussing this amongst themselves. We won't get any hints as to what they're going to do. They're all going to profess loyalty to Donald Trump. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, 20 or more of them could decide to pull the plug. Uh, they'd rather go into the 2020 election with Mike Pence as the president, which would be the alternative. Indeed, he's even more conservative than President Trump. So that might very well not upset their base. But do you think, you know, that things have changed in terms of what the American public regard as unacceptable uh, since 1974? Well, I, I believe the American public uh, uh, sees this as clearly unacceptable. In 1974, it took time uh, to convince the American public that Richard Nixon was indeed guilty of high crimes and misdemeanors. Uh, but remember, with Richard Nixon, he was a crook, but at least he was our crook. We didn't have to worry about him working for the KGB uh, or for foreign powers. 
uh, in this situation with Donald Trump is much more dangerous to our national security than anything Richard Nixon ever did. Uh, so uh, Americans are going to, when they see the facts, be very, very concerned. As they say, conservative Americans look at this and say, well, let's just have Mike Pence. Uh, why not go into the 2020 election with him in the White House and send Donald Trump back to New York uh, get him out of there. Uh, he has been a disaster for the Republican Party uh, ever since he uh, took the nomination in 2016. Richard Painter, thank you very much indeed. Now, there's 